touches on kind of abusive relationship um, themes and misgendering. Okay, uh, um, it, I don't know if it's just me. Yeah. You're doing incredibly well, but I would like you to slow down slightly. Oh, I'm getting notes. Do you hear that, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just like you know, it just just uh, it's yeah, performance <laughs> note. Just just ever so slightly slow down. Is that all right, Becca? Thank you very much, okay. our okay. darling okay. creative yeah. director. Sorry. <laughs> right. This is called Lunar Eclipse. Do you remember sitting by the estuary, under the blood-red moon? Cigarettes in our hands, wind and ash in our hair, while the pubs build its noisy residents out into the streets towards their homes. Home for us, reflected in the river, was deep red light. We'd been lost for years, in and out of places to stay. Home was a foreign concept. But we both knew the comfort of moonlight, and to see it so changed struck silence in us. I never thought I'd write this poem. I thought I wouldn't write it because you were as constant as that globe of rock in the sky. We had a connection that held us in mutual orbit and we waxed and waned to the rhythms of each other. Some summers we never slept a night apart. Some summers we knew the crevices of park benches and the damp wet mornings of the castle grounds like the insides of our unwashed socks. Some winters we never saw each other's reflected light only danced behind clouds, held in orbit by the knowledge that the other was there, waxing and waning, breathing and fighting. Some winters you slept on my couch. The seasons turned and the years with them, and they brought some of age's more unwelcome advances. We had to stop drinking cider because we started getting hangovers. I had to stop sleeping next to you and it became obvious that I had become woman to you rather than person. When you asked me if you could touch my chest just to see what it felt like and I was too scared to say no, you giggled and groped. I cried myself to sleep for weeks. Years spent carefully stepping over that crack in the planet's surface could not prevent larger structural damage from reaching its core. I had to learn to dance more carefully now, touch more fleetingly now. Yet still I looked to the sky every night to trace your path and know I was safe on mine. I packed my car and put miles between us, but I watched the sunset over the sea every night. Scrolling down the numbers in my phone book to see yours there was me holding on tight to the one thing in the universe that made me feel safe. You. I never thought I'd write this poem, but that crack, how it grew. You told me that you loved me in a way I didn't love you. You cried yourself to sleep at night because you were my rock instead of my lover, my best friend instead of my fuck buddy, my family instead of my boyfriend. You begged for collision instead of mutual orbit and I grew a thicker skin, attempted to build a callus over the crack so that I could show you music stories, dance, demonstrate to you that you had no need to own my body when I so freely wanted to share with you my soul. I didn't know then that deviation from a collision course was impossible, that the callus I had shed to cover the crack on your planet left me vulnerable to invasion by madness and sadness, that in that moment of vulnerability I would give you my body just to be rid of it for a second, that you would take it, but you did and two great rocks fell out of orbit. I'm writing this from the wreckage on the seashore. The skyline looks very different from here. I can see parts of myself scattered across the beach, moon dust, great grey stones, something flickering molten red that I think used to live in my center. I'm writing this because they never found your body. I'm writing this because 3,760 miles away there was a lunar eclipse. I'm writing this because I forgot to be a planet and tried to be a plaster. Please keep dancing. Please keep dancing. <laughs>